Welcome back to another episode of A Different Perspective. In the last episode, we talked about practical and non-practical gear. And in this episode, we're gonna carry that conversation over to lenses. We're gonna be talking about prime lenses versus zoom lenses. We're finally gonna do it in this episode. We're gonna have an ultimate showdown. Primes, zooms, who will win? Pew, 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 pew. Actually, really, it depends on the use case. <laughs> So in all seriousness, it just comes down to what's actually going to be best for you. But with that being said, I'm going to cover zooms, the pros and cons for those, because I pretty much or I actually just own zoom lenses um, and Jean's going to cover the prime lenses. Yeah, I just have primes for now. I'm looking into zooms, but one thing I would say about primes is they're really easy to get started. with. I would agree. All right, so you might have noticed that my background changed a little bit here. That's because I grabbed some of my lenses. But right now on the camera, I have my 24 to 70 lens. I've got my 14 to 30 and a 70 to 200 that I use. So I shoot all zoom lenses. So the really good thing about having a zoom lens in your kit is you have more flexibility and range to capture different subjects. You also can compact the kit that you're carrying around with you and it's less prime lenses that you'd have to carry around in your bag so not only can that kind of uh, prevent you from switching out lenses to capture different styles of photography it also reduces the weight and we we know about carrying that big backpack with all that weight in it that can get stressful and very heavy very quickly and another good thing, especially with travel, um, zoom lens allows you to adapt to your situation a little more easily than having to switch uh, or carry around more prime lenses with you. And even though I'm all about zooms, as you can tell from my kit, I just own zooms at this moment, there are some negatives to that. Typically with the better quality zoom lenses, you're looking at a higher price point Sometimes you can be stuck with like a variable aperture lens and you don't really get that same quality that you would with say a prime lens. And then one more thing to mention that could be a negative in some circumstances is that when you're using a zoom, you can just zoom in to capture your subject and it can lead you to being a little less creative with the position that you're at. Whereas with a prime, you have to physically move closer to the subject if you want to capture it. And with a zoom, you can kind of get lazy and just zoom in with your camera or with that lens. So sometimes that can lead us to not seeing things from a different angle. Um, and we could ultimately miss a more creative shot because we're just staying right in the same spot where we're zooming the lens in to capture our subject. Whereas when we move around and get closer to the subject, Sometimes, like I said, we can see things from a different angle and we might end up with a better result than what we originally had the idea for. I guess you could say that you can sometimes view it from a different perspective. <laughs> I was trying to avoid saying that. <laughs> so with prime lenses, typically for the money, you get a sharper lens because there's really not a whole lot of moving parts inside besides the aperture. So for less money, you do get better quality and better sharpness, but at the same time, you're losing out on all that focal length. And something else to keep in mind is you're gonna need a lot more lenses, obviously, to cover the focal range that you would typically get with a zoom lens. Another thing about prime lenses is they often come with a wider aperture, or at least an option for a wider aperture. And that's because the quality of the glass can be a lot more refined since they're not moving and the apertures can get opened up to 1.8, 1.4, even 1.0 in extreme cases, though at that point it's kind of overkill. And then unlike zooms, Having a prime forces you to get creative with your composition. So if you're running a 50 millimeter lens and your subject is kind of far away, you actually need to step towards them and get closer to frame it the way that you want to, or vice versa. If you're too close to a subject, oftentimes you need to step back, which is really helpful in a creative sense. Um, the downside of that is that if your space doesn't allow, you may not be able to move that much, but you could then swap to a different, uh, a different focal length at that point. 
So really the main pro to owning a prime lens is the price for quality of the image and sharpness, as well as it kind of forces you to think more creatively about your composition. And that's kind of a good thing for a lot of beginners. So some cons about prime lenses is, uh, like I said before, obviously you're going to need a lot more of them to cover the focal range that you are going for. So you may need a lens for super wide angle, like at 16 millimeters. You may need a 24 millimeter. You may need a 35, a 50, and so on, on up to like 600 if you wanted to. Um, you'll notice a lot of people probably get a mixture of primes versus zooms, but that's one thing to take note of is if you do want that quality and you want to spend less money, you will need more lenses, which in the long term actually sometimes ends up being more expensive than a decent set of zooms. Another con is it's not as flexible as a zoom. So like Kyle mentioned, if you're out and about running gun and you need your lens to adapt to the situation, you have to swap your lens all the time. And that can be really cumbersome. It's dangerous because if you're just doing it on your own, you could drop a lens or you could risk getting your sensor covered in dust if it's windy. So these are things you'll need to think about when deciding between zooms or primes. So if you're here trying to decide whether to get a prime or a zoom, Really what you should be thinking about is what do you need it for? What's gonna make the most sense for you? And like we mentioned in the previous episode, maybe try renting a couple of different lenses to see how you would use it and what makes the most sense. And just remember that using a zoom gives you more flexibility, but it is a little bit more to learn and you wanna keep in mind the distance between your subject and yourself instead of just relying on the zoom. And then also keep in mind in the long term what gear you're going to need the most and when. And for a lot of people, honestly, it's getting a nice set of zooms. And then once you're really dialed in and know what you want specifically, you can start getting into those nice primes. If you have the money and you want to invest in a decent set of lenses now, I would suggest getting spending the money on high-end zoom lenses because honestly, the quality is incredible and you only need three and a teleconverter like Kyle has to have basically infinite focal range. Yeah, exactly. And, and one thing that I would suggest if you do have the money to start off your kit and you're looking for a set of lenses, I would I would definitely suggest going with like a 14 to 30 like I have or a 14 to 24, that 24 to 70 and the 70 to 200 is that way you're going to have a lot more flexibility in the subjects that you can capture. Um, Kyle, which of those three lenses, if someone can't get all three at one time, which would you suggest they get first? I definitely think the 24 to 70, which is one that's mainly on my camera all the time when we record these episodes, um, when I'm just out doing general like street photography or anything like that, I think that's going to be the most useful one to start off with just because you do get into that wide spectrum range with the 24 and then you can also capture more portraiture stuff with that 70 at the end of the the range with the 70 millimeters there yeah that's perfect and just so you guys know we both shoot on full frame cameras so something to keep in mind is if you are shooting APS-C which a lot of beginners have because they're more affordable you want to consider the focal range difference and how it, it reacts to the camera so a 24 to 70 on an APS-C is kind of more like a 50 to 90 50 to 100 sort of so you would just want to keep that in mind somewhere around there I don't know the exact math. I'm not that nerdy. Math. <laughs> math stinks. What? And with all that said about zoom lenses, once you kind of get an idea of what focal ranges you like or want to work with, then you can really dive in and get niche with your really fancy primes and kind of go for a more specific look or style or whatever your work requires. So one thing that I do want to warn you about, uh, and this is something that I did, is I really wanted to get, I was obsessed with like getting the perfect image from the beginning. So I actually just started buying prime lenses right away. I don't own any zooms yet, but I do in a way regret it because I was stuck with those focal lengths and there were times where it's like I was out traveling and I wanted to get a picture of a waterfall far away, but it was just too far. I'm not saying that I regret having prime lenses at all because I, I really love them and they really helped me, I think, get a better sense of composition, but it definitely is a better investment to think about having a wider range of focal lengths within less lenses at the beginning, just so that you have them 
and then you can kind of dive in later to the primes. I think the reason that I, I want to bring that up is because I am just thinking practically now, and even though I love the prime lenses that I own, I don't have a lens that I can throw on and know that I can just take with me anywhere and it'll get at least majority of the shots that I need. I typically need to bring a couple of lenses and that's just kind of cumbersome. So before I leave the house, it's like this big ordeal for me to think like, all right, well, lens do I want to bring today? And then if I go with my 90, then I wanted something wider, like there's an amazing landscape then I'm kind of stuck with that. So just something to keep in mind. All right, so our photo challenge was drone photography, and now we're gonna move into our process for how we got that shot and what our editing process was behind the photo. Sean, what you got? All right, so uh, my environment is obviously extremely different than Kyle's. I live out in the middle of nowhere, literally, but we do have some pretty amazing things. And as you can see here, I've got a couple pictures of some cows, and this happened a little while back. And I just thought the shadows coming off the cows were really cool. I just happened to snow and be really windy. So I got these really interesting streaks as well as these cow trails going through the snow. And I just thought it created some really interesting leading lines. I did try to go with a shot kind of like this where it was more diagonal instead of straight above, but I didn't quite like it as much as this. This just really showed off the landscape, the herd and the shadows and everything. And so it was between this picture and this picture and what sold it for me, it was a couple small things, but mostly it was this cow right here. And the shadow on this one just seemed a little more dynamic than that straight on sideways one. And there was already a sideways one over here. So I decided to just go with this picture. I felt like it was a little bit nicer. And as far as that it goes, it's really, really simple. So with light, I boosted the exposure just a teeny bit pulled the highlights all the way down because it's snow. So I wanted to retain as much detail as I could in the highlights. And then I boosted the shadows up quite a bit because it was a very contrasty scene. Uh, then I bumped the whites up because I pulled the highlights all the way down and wanted to kind of preserve that detail. I needed to bring that white level back up just so that the snow didn't look gray, but still looked more white. And then I took the blacks, brought those up as well, just so that we could see the detail in the underside or the shadow side of the cattle there. And then all I did with the curves was I added a bit of a gamma lift. So you can see that just kind of brightens everything up nicely. And I really like that look. So the white balance I kept basically at daylight because the scene itself was actually pretty blue and I didn't want to white balance to the snow because if I do that, to me, it looks yellow and it's not a bad look even though it is white, but because those shadows are dark blue, I just wanted to kind of keep that natural sky reflectance on there. So I really didn't touch the white balance at all. These are the settings that came in from my drone. I didn't boost the vibrance or the saturation whatsoever and I don't think I did any color mixing. If I did, it was very minimal. Uh, nope, no color mixing. So very, very straightforward. And then I did do some split toning in this image. I edited this before the new color wheels, color grades uh, were out in Lightroom. And if I just shift that a little, you can see I pulled a little bit of the purple out of the scene and I added a little bit more blue into the highlights just to make it look more like snow <laughs> instead of like a weird, like, I don't know. It is kind of a little more pink than I would like it to be. So that's what I did there. For the effects, I added a bit of texture, a little bit of clarity, and just a small teeny tiny vignette with a really feathered out look just to kind of bring the focus towards the center, toward the cattle there. For detail, just increased the default just a little bit. The default's 40, so I increased it to 55. And with my masking here, you can see that I kind of pulled it out just a little, but I wanted to leave the detail of the snow and the I just basically wanted to get rid of any grain or noise in the flat areas, but it's a pretty dynamic scene. So I'm not too worried about masking out things like crazy. Other than that, I just did the chromatic aberration removal for optics and that is it. So here's the before, here's the after. Really straightforward, nothing really to it. I was able to do it from my house and uh, just fly the drone out the door, find the cattle, go up a little higher and get the shot. So I was pretty pleased with it. And that is my submission. Originally, my goal for this drone photo challenge was to actually go back to the same place that I, I chose for the freeze frame photo of the waves crashing against the rocks. 
because out there is this really neat old grain silo that's no longer being used. One of the things that I really wanted to capture with this photo challenge was like a top down perspective shooting this. But what I quickly realized was because I've got just the Mavic Mini and most of the days on Lake Erie when I tried to shoot the photo, the wind was really whipping around and it was too much for the drone to handle. And I didn't want to take the drone too high and risk losing it on the rooftop of this building. So I did get some photos of this, a couple different shots, a couple different perspectives. Um, but I quickly realized that with what I had in mind, I know I could have turned the drone sideways to get this more of this top down shot, but I, I kept going back to an angle like this because I, I liked that the way that looked a bit better. And I got this one, which was pretty cool, where it, you're seeing a lot of the development that's happening on the outer harbor with the city in the, the city skyline in the backdrop. But then I had a little bit more time the day that I took the drone out. So I thought, why not try something else out just to see if I can capture something else. But after going downtown and getting the drone up, I quickly realized that I really liked this angle and this shot of one of the most iconic uh, buildings in Buffalo City Hall, which you can see straight ahead here. I got a couple more shots and different angles from different heights with the drone. Here was straight down and I got another kind of similar shot to the one that I ended up with. And then these two were just from a different height, but I thought that perspective again was pretty cool because it just kind of the buildings really frame city hall i really was drawn to this photo because you can see some of lake erie in the background and then you still see some of the trees in the back of city hall changing over so you get the drone shot you you get some of a little bit of fall and then we get to see some more of buffalo new york from a different height so i thought this was just a really cool one to sum up everything that i really wanted to capture within the photo so this is what i have and what i'll submit for my final edit this is the original photo straight out of camera so to walk you through my editing process i slightly boosted the exposure i love really contrasty images so i boosted the contrast quite a bit and something that I do a lot too is I take the highlights all the way down. So I've got those at negative 100, boosted the shadows up to 49, lowered the whites to negative 15. For my tone curve, I ended up just giving this a little bit of a slight S curve there. For the color, I boosted the temperature just a tiny bit to make the overall image a little bit warmer. That's what it was originally. Now here's where I did most of my work in the color mixer. I changed around the yellow, starting off with this to negative 70, so it would have more of an orange hue. In the green, I lowered the green to negative 48. Now here I changed the hue to plus 10, desaturated that quite a bit down to negative 70, and changed the luminance so it would be too bright. For my blues, I've been kind of um, picking up a habit or <laughs> just been kind of getting a look to the photos that I'm mainly posting on Instagram where I'm taking away the blues and I like the result that I get, especially when it comes to the sky or the water. I don't like the sky to be too blue, so I've been dropping the saturation of my blues quite a bit. And I also knocked down the luminance there. And then what I noticed with the purple and pink here, I was noticing that in the trees, uh, it was oddly getting a purple, just a little tint to it and then the like rooftops and everything. So I just, I knocked those down for the pink and the purple. So you can see that changes quite a bit when I boost it up. Uh, but I noticed that just a little bit in the trees in the distance here. So I knocked those all the way down. Now for the effects, for the texture, clarity, and dehaze, 
boosted those all 10. Got a little bit of a vignette in here, negative 14. All right, for the detail, I brought that up to 50. Made sure the radius was very small at a 0 0.5. The detail up to 11 and my masking, I brought that all the way up to 100 just so the very edges of the building, the streets uh, would just be sharpened. And as you can see, when you play around with the masking, you don't want to introduce any additional noise in the image by sharpening it. So I just usually bring up this masking. So I'm only highlighting and sharpening what I want to sharpen in the image. And that's typically me bringing that all the way up to 100. For the color noise, I just brought that up to 50 and I remove chromatic aberration. And that my friends is my edit. Alrighty, Kyle. So I was clapping in the mic. <clears throat> Alrighty, Kyle. <laughs> so for this episode's challenge uh, on the topic of zooms versus primes, I am going to challenge us to a locked focal length challenge. What? So that puts me at a disadvantage because I wanted to use my zooms. Yeah. Sorry, bro. I like the flexibility of my zooms. Come on, man. Grow up. <laughs> I like that though. That's that's great. It's gonna be challenging for me. Thanks. Yeah. So the whole thing with this is whatever gear you have, whether it's your smartphone or your, I don't know, webcam. <laughs> your Tamagotchi. Yeah. What? Your Tamagotchi. Yeah. Your Tom. So if you've got that, or if you got your zooms or primes, uh, what you need to do is ahead of time, choose a focal length and stick with it through the whole shoot and try to come up with a composition that you really like. It could be of anything, just lock the focal length and try not to zoom uh, for the entirety of your shoot. So what focal length are we challenging each other on? Let's do a wide angle challenge. So Kyle and I are going to be doing an ultra wide challenge, but that doesn't mean you have to. Whatever gear you have, go ahead and use it, but choose a focal length that you have access to and try to stick with it throughout the entirety of your shoot so that it kind of forces you to get creative. Whether that means you need to get closer to your subject or farther from your subject, it allows you to really think differently about your composition. And that is the challenge that I'm presenting to us this time. High five, high five. Awesome. Oh yeah. Camera's up here, not down there. And with that being said, we made it to episode five. So if you've been watching all this time, we, we wanna say how much we appreciate you watching those other episodes. If you haven't watched those yet, that's completely fine. You can go back and see the different photography challenges that we both challenged each other on. And we welcome you to join in on those photography challenges on Instagram. Tag us at a differentperspective.tv and also use that hashtag a different perspective TV when you post your photos. So that way we can get notified when you post them. Yeah, and you can actually search on Instagram the hashtag a different perspective TV and see what everyone else has done for past submissions and kind of get inspiration for what's to come. And you can get involved with that as well. Also, if you want to get involved with challenges in the future, go ahead and subscribe and click the bell icon so that you're notified when the next episode is out. That way you can be into the challenge right when we are. Thank you for watching. Oof. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for real. Thanks. Thanks. See you, see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Hi, Mom. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm sorry. It's photo challenge time. What is it? Is it time for the challenge? Is it? Is it photo challenge time? <laughs> All right, so let's just jump right into it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see that on my on my feed. Um, give me your energy. Thank you.